Hello, hello, and welcome back everybody to Lori's Boston Found, where thrifted is the new black. My name is Lori. I am a full-time reseller on Poshmark and on eBay, and I dabble in Mercari as well. I'm so happy that you found me. If you are new here, welcome. My channel is all about reselling. Reselling has been a life changer for me. I've made some incredible friends along the way, and I have settled on a career that I am beyond passionate about. So I hope you'll join my community here on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button if you are enjoying yourself at any time during this video and also give it a thumbs up if you like hauls. Today I am very excited to share with you some of the great things that I found shopping outside of Boston. I say this often, but the closer I go to the city, the better the brands get in my experience. Not to say that I haven't found some phenomenal things closer to Central Mass where I reside, but every time that I go closer to the city, I often find higher end pieces that will flip for more money than some of the stuff that I find around here. A good portion of the items that I buy and sell I find at stores within a 15 mile radius from my house. Boston, I think is technically like 21 miles from my house, um, but it can also take a little bit of time to get closer to the city. So I did some thrifting and two pieces in particular that I found I am just beyond excited about. But some of the other things you'll see are very much bread and butter stuff. I can't remember who it was who said, you know, my bread and butter items are the ones that pay the bills. And I think that to be kind of true for me as well. For every one super exciting like $200, $100 flip that I have, I have several, several items that sell between $20 and $30. So for every exciting one, there are a lot of like the bread and butter items that flip for a smaller profit, but really do help sustain my business. So anyways, let's get right into the haul. I have 17 items, or I think maybe 18 items, but one is a set. I spent $92, so my average cost of goods, the last I checked, and I have it written in front of me, but when I did my little spreadsheet, I think my average cost of goods was $5.29. I think the most expensive item from this haul, I paid $10.99 four and then I had a little bit of a discount at the end so let's just get into it okay I think what I want to do is start and finish with my two favorite pieces and then I'll sandwich another potentially exciting one right in the middle. How does that sound? For starters, I got, and, and we are at the tail end of winter, and I think in a few of my previous hauls, I've mentioned that I'm really looking for transitional pieces that will kind of bring me into spring, and then I'll start thinking about summer soon. But there are always times when you find a piece, and it doesn't matter what season it is, you grab it. And I feel like this was one of those pieces. This is just, a, the brand is Woolrich, but when I first saw this, it really reminded me of Canada Goose. It has a super sturdy zipper. The quality is just beautiful. It has these pockets. It's like an army green. Kind of reminds me of the jacket, the Amazon jacket that I picked up recently with my friend Kim. So this was $10.99. So I did not look up comps. I trust the Woolrich brand. Uh, I have sold it enough times to identify pieces that I think are worth picking up. So I grabbed this thinking, you know, even if I sell it for $50, that'll be a win if I'm spending $10 or $11 on it. Well, when I got home, I realized that it was a men's coat. I looked into it a little bit more and it is the men's Arctic parka is what it's called. And there are several different versions. So I'm not sure like if this is current, if it is from two years ago, these jackets or coats, parkas, whatever you want to call them, they range from $500 to $900 retail. And many, many, many of them are selling right now between $200 and $300. So I was thrilled when I got home and looked at those comps because I didn't run comps on this at the store because I was confident enough to know that it would make me money. I just didn't know how much money. So I did share on my Instagram story this and one other piece, which I'm saving for the end, which is the big hurrah for me. Um, so you may already know what they are if you follow me on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, um, I do post over there quite often, especially to my stories. And you can find me at Lori's Boston Found. That's my Instagram handle if you want like more daily updates from me. So this is a men's extra small Woolrich Arctic Parka. I'm probably going to list it for about 250 although many were listed above 300 I think because we're in March, I'm just thinking this would be a nice piece to move 
so that I'm not housing it all summer because the coats do take up some extra space in my inventory, but I was very excited about this. Okay, now for a couple bread and butter pieces. I picked up this Soul Cycle jacket. All you need is soul. I thought this was really cute. Anytime I can find branded stuff for Soul Cycle or Peloton, if it's the right price, I will grab it. I feel like Soul Cycle has dipped a little bit now that everybody's been home for the pandemic, and I feel like so uh Peloton, their value is going up a bit as more and more and more people get their Peloton. So I thought this was super cute. Um, I I don't know if I have this listed yet, but the comps, I feel like if I had picked this piece up even six to, no, if I had picked this up last year, I would have priced it about 50. I think I'm gonna price it at about $38, between 35 and $40. So this is a size small, and I think that was only four or five dollars. This was one of the items I wavered on because um, it's just not, it's not my vibe much. This is Fox Racing brand. Uh, I knew that this was a good seller or I had heard about this from other resellers. I do learn a lot from other people, but you always wanna test the waters for yourself. Just because somebody else says it's great, it may not be the best for you, but I did try this out. This says Fox Racing. I had a hoodie. Um, from this brand and I want to say it's sold between 30 and $40 and this was just a long sleeve t-shirt these are like four dollars at this store so not a lot of money um, so I decided to go ahead and grab it it looks like um, it's never been washed like it's in really good condition so that is the logo if you ever see this this is a size extra large so I'll probably list that for about thirty dollars so a new rack had just come out and I saw that these were new with tags so I grabbed them they're kind of hard to see with this lighting the brand is Theo and Spence and I actually cut the price tags off they're from Nordstrom Rack the retail um, on each piece was between 40 and 50, but I think Nordstrom Rack had them priced in like the 20, $30 range. So this has a bumblebee on it, which it's kind of, oh, I don't know if you're gonna see it. It's very faint and it's that crazy soft, soft um, fabric. And then there were some matching joggers that were also new with tag. Um, they only charged me for the set $5, but I was thinking that I might list them separately. I'm not sure, but it, oh my gosh, so incredibly soft. But when I got home, smelt a little bit like smoke, and I have to say, I've steamed these, and there's still a little bit of lingering, but look at this nice, um, I love the natural tie here. I mean, these are just so cute, but I hate to um, take the price tag off to wash them, but there is a faint smell of smoke, which is a real turnoff for me. So either I'm going to keep those and just enjoy the comfort of them because they are so incredibly cozy, or I'm going to steam them again. I hate to even write smells like smoke. Like, ugh, I don't ever want to sell anything that smells like smoke unless it's worth hundreds of dollars and people can overlook it. These were a little bit risky. I don't know that my return is going to be huge on these, but I love this brand, Zadig and Voltaire, and I don't find this a lot near me. I've sold a few of their pieces before, and I always get super excited when I find them. These jeans were marked $12.99 or $14.99, so this was actually the most expensive thing, even more expensive than the Woolrich, and the return is going to be a fraction of what I get for that Woolrich. Um, these are the Eva I believe they are the Eva High Rise Skinny Jean, and I do like this wash. I think there are 26 at first. Oh boy, look at this. Look at that. Here we go. What a bummer. <laughs> you know, this was one of those, I was really torn on these two. You know what that means? These are gonna go to Ange. I don't know if they'll fit her, but anyways. Ah, oh, that's such a bummer. No returns at this place. One good thing about savers, they take returns. This wouldn't be the worst. This looks like someone must have pulled these up. I've done that my fair share. Pulled up by the belt strap and they just pulled one too many times and now there's a hole. That stinks. I was gonna lift, list these for like $70, $75. It especially stinks because I paid up for them. What are you gonna do? These things happen. So we'll see. So maybe I will either stitch them and then, now I'll probably won't stitch them and I'll price them at $45 and just try to make my money back. This piece I was really excited to find because on Thrifters Villa, which is the podcast that I co-host with my friend Daniela, we went over spring trends and we talked about like netting being a trend for the spring. So 
I guess you can think in terms of fishnet, but not fishnet stockings, but just netted anything. Uh, like fishnet looking bags, sweaters, um, accessories, anything. And so when I found this, I was really excited because it is that like kind of fishnet look. So it's really sheer and it's by Rag and & Bone. And it looks like it's probably new without tag because this little thing is still hanging and it's in beautiful condition. So Rag & Bone, uh, similar to like Frame and some of those brands I used to be over the moon when I found. And now I'm like, Still excited, but I manage my expectations. This is not gonna be a huge amount of money. And there's one other brand that I found that is very similar in this uh, range as far as like level of excitement that I used to feel about a year ago. And now I've toned it down a little bit, but I still love it. I love Rag & Bone. And this is really cute. It will probably list somewhere between 35 and $45 and it'll probably sell around 30. Um, in previous years, I might expect to get a little more for that. But I was happy that something that is trending in 2021 spring, I actually found um, at the thrift store because as much as trends are fun, sometimes they're hard to find at the thrift store, depending on the trend. So, all right, this is my middle of the pack, potentially exciting, maybe not, pickup. How's that for an intro? So I go to the blazer section. Their blazers are $5.99. Blazers have been a little bit slow moving for me, but if you find the right blazer, you can send it to the real real if it's a certain brand. Some are super trendy if they're oversized, 80s looking. Um, I just like to look at the blazers, plus they're really quick. You know how long it takes you to go through t-shirts? You go through the blazers and you can fly through them because they're kind of thick. I feel the same way about sweaters. Anyways, this is 100% silk Carlos Meal designer, size 42. It's almost, it's like a tie-dye, almost abstract. If I come in close here, you can see how the fabric is all gathered here. But here is the exciting part. It is new with tag, definitely vintage from Neiman Marcus and check out the price. Boom. $816 and it retailed for $13.80. So it was, I don't know if that's a sale price at Neiman or what. Yeah, it looks like it's a sale ticket. So it retailed for $1,360 on sale for 816. I mean, I'm gonna pick that up. <laughs> so then you look at comps and reality sets in and you see some of these, some of this brand has sold for $20. And then you see some pieces that have sold for 300. So then I looked on the real real, they do accept it. Uh, I just think this photographed so beautifully. So I think I have it priced at 299 and the closure is all hook and eye all down the front. So it's really a beautiful piece. It's 100% silk. I don't know if this is made in Spain or what. Where are you from? Um, no, it's made in Brazil. 100% silk, the lining is 100% silk. I mean, this piece is just stunning. And it is a size 42. What's, what worried me is that on their website, it said that a 42 is a size six, but this tag said size 10. So this is one of those things that I definitely need to include measurements for. And obviously anything that I'm pricing over $100 I'm going to include measurements on. So I think I have this priced at $2.99. I'm gonna see how it does on my own because it was just such a joy to photograph. Some pieces I dread photographing, other pieces I love. I loved photographing that piece. So I'm gonna see how that does for a little bit. I'm gonna keep it on a short leash as I like to say. And then if it sits for a really long time, I'm going to send it to the real real and see how it does over there. But some of their jackets, a lot of their blazers over there from this designer were selling for, you know, 200 and then I'd only get 40%. So, and I've already taken the photograph, so I don't know. We'll see. What would you do with that coat? You can probably tell by the looks of this thermal oversize that I found this Free People piece. It is a size medium. I love, see, this is a perfect transitional piece, I think, because it's, it still gives you some coverage, like if you wanna go into spring with this, but just not wear a jacket at night. I love the oversize, the raw edge. Um, I think this was three, I think this was four or $5. So not a huge money maker, but I think thermals for free people, you know, sometimes they're pretty fast moving. I'll probably list that at about $30, but it will probably sell between 20 and 25 is my guess. 
Here's the other brand that I still love to find, but the return isn't always there, but I still pick it up because I love it. And that is All Saints. Uh, I found this in the sweater section. It is Shetland wool. Has a tiny bit of pilling, although it looks like it looks like we got most of it off. And it's men's. It's a size large. All Saints. Is my tag? Uh, and it's just like a. Oh, it's so nice. It's a zipper cardigan in the front. I mean, this retails for over three hundred dollars, but I will probably list it. I don't know, seventy, seventy-five dollars, and take offers. Maybe I should even list it at like fifty since it's wool and see where it goes. I'm gonna look at the comps. I don't think the comps were that great on it. And there is a little bit of pilling, so maybe I'll list it at 50. I only paid like five or six dollars for it, so 50 would be great. I'm wanting to like move things faster these days. This was what was next to the pajamas that had that faint smell of smoke, although this smelled wonderful. Also new with tag, the brand is Daydream by Berkshire Woman, has this tag. What I love about this is the color right off the bat. It's that kind of mauve soft, not quite blush, but just pretty. I love this color pink with this cream colored fold over. It is a size large, but if you look really close, there is, where can we see it? Can we see this pattern here? Are you seeing there are llamas and there are cactus? There it is, there it is, how cute. I love when you can kind of have like something subtle. So if you love llamas, but it's not like scree it's not like a graphic, like it's screaming llama, it's like subtle llama and subtle cactus. <laughs> I don't know where that combination comes in, but I think it's kind of fun. So I have that, I think I have that listed around 30, 35. My pile's getting big now. Okay, a few more pieces. I had 17, so, oh, I'm gonna have to go downstairs and grab my shoes. Did I get shoes this day? I think I did. Okay, this I thought was really pretty. Not my like all-time favorite brand to pick up, but I loved this piece. I love me a good poncho. I love um, any sort of like cover-up, and I loved these colors. It was also new with tag. It is Chico's. It looks like an older, um, I don't know if it's an older label because when I went online, I could still get the stock photo. It was just sold out. So I don't think it's that old. So it's a large, extra large. It is not silk. It's 100% polyester. The price tag is $89. I think I have this priced at 45 maybe. I was gonna price it at 50 because it's so nice. But um, the comps didn't, I mean, the comps ranged. There were a couple pieces from Chico's that sold $50, $60, but the bulk of them were more like 20, 30. So I think I went with 45 and um, I think I did. If you go to Poshmark and it's 50, I'm, I'm sorry, but I think I priced it in that $45 range. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second and I'm gonna shift a few things around and grab some more inventory. I think we're more than halfway there, but just, I think that this is a good example of, you know, I was at the store for maybe two hours. I went with my husband, so I know it couldn't be that long. I think he initially said, I'll be back in an hour and a half, and he came back in like an hour and 45 minutes. It was late in the day. Um, and it was like a Saturday at five o'clock and the store closed at seven. So it wasn't like, this was just a very quick trip. Usually if I go into Boston or towards town, I will take the whole day. And I found, you know, Zadig and Voltaire, All Saints, Rag and Bone, you know, like I found some pretty good brands just off the bat. So I really love shopping close to Boston. I am so sad because their bins are still closed and I don't know if they're opening anytime soon, but I've been thinking about just doing a Goodwill haul at the Boston Goodwill that's attached to where the bins used to be um, because I just, after I got a little taste of this, I'm like, I just need to shop in Boston more often. So that's my plan. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so as it turns out, I only have three more things to show you. So two more and then my favorite piece. This is a double-breasted Eileen Fisher knit blazer, which I think is so, so nice, so flattering. It's a size large. I might take this one for a spin before I sell it, but it's just like a lightweight organic cotton blend, stretchy, maybe it's not even a blend. Let me see here. Yeah, 91% cotton and then 9% spandex and partial lining, 100% cotton, so cute. This, you could definitely just wear it open for a more casual look. I really love that look. Just kind of brings your outfit together. And I love that it's cotton, so going into spring, I think this is a perfect piece. 
I love this. I need to try that on. It's really cute. I didn't buy a lot of shoes. I'm, I, I've said this before. I'm trying to chill on shoes until I move some. And I feel like a lot of what I'm seeing are ankle boots, which I have a ton of. And so I'm just kind of looking ahead, trying to find unique pieces or something something that would be good for the spring that would still bring a good dollar value back. I think I have over 200 pairs of shoes in my inventory. Uh, so yeah, but I thought these were cute. These are Brooks, they are running shoes. I feel like people are gonna be outside pretty soon. Brooks is a great running brand. The thing about real runners is when you get shoes that are running shoes, like a Brooks that is just known for running, most people will, will want to know like how many miles have been run in these shoes. And as a reseller, not most people, some serious runners will ask that. So if I ever find a good pair of running shoes that the traction is low on, I won't even pick them up, even if this part of the shoe is in great condition, because I could just tell that it's got a lot of miles on it and that a real runner might not like that, if that makes sense. I thought these were so cool. These are a woman's size nine. They are Brooks and this is called like confetti something, but how cool. I just thought these were, I thought these were just awesome. So I think I have them listed for, I don't know, like $65 and I think I'm middle of the road. Some of these were priced really high. Yeah, USA size nine. I'm like an eight and a half. Otherwise I would have been all over these cause totally my vibe. Those are really cute. Okay, last piece, so excited. And it's so funny, I wish I knew her name. When I posted this sweater to my story, a couple people had swiped up and mentioned this person. If I know her name, cause I went to her, um, I did go to her YouTube channel. She has a YouTube channel and she featured this brand sweater, which I'd never heard of before. And now that I have it and have it posted, I've gotten so much feedback on it. I found this little unassuming cardigan sweater. Kind of looks like the arms are a little short, but I looked at it and I know that cardigans are pretty big right now. I think cardigan sets are really big and just cardigans in general, I always think are safe. Felt it, knew that it was wool just from the feel of it. And then I looked at the tag and I thought this tag is interesting. And I, I've talked about this before in my videos. You don't always have to know the brand or know that it's a bolo brand to look at something and see that it's quality. Like once you've been doing this for a while, you can just pick up on quality. Or you notice a tag kind of has like that organic vibe and I was just like, hmm. So is it Bebe, Babe, Baba? I don't know how to say this, but it's B-A-B-A-A -A -A with the emphasis over the A. If the pronunciation police wanna set me straight on this, feel free, because I would like to know how to really say it. I'm sure I could just look it up. Anyways, I digress. This sweater is made in Spain and it, it, it retails for 234 euro, 230, 250 in that range. The resale value is crazy because a lot of these are selling for exactly what they are priced for in Europe. They have these cardigans and there's like number 18, number 19, number 17, whatever, like that's how they identify it, like N-O period with a number. So this is number 19. This is made of wool. It looks like there's a lot of cotton ones that are on the market right now. There's also a mini version where the sleeves are even shorter. When I first looked at this, I thought this might be the mini version, but somebody who inquired about the sweater once I gave the measurements on the arm said that it was the regular one, which I suspected based on the color because I matched it up. It has these really cool um, but buttons, buttons. See how they're like blue in the center? And I don't want to bore you, but I do want to read a little bit from their website because I find brand research really fascinating. And this brand in particular is definitely worth knowing a little bit about. Here's the description. Pure wool cardigan, it's 230 euros. Pure wool cardigan with organic bone buttons. A very comfortable and versatile in a chunky texture with a very easy low neckline knitted in our local wool. This wool is very special as it comes from our sheep. This shade is non-dyed, made directly with the fleece from our sheep. Our local wool feels like a hug. We care about our animals and we can assure you that all local sheep providing this wool have been treated with care. 100% eco Spanish wool. I mean, 
I thought this was so cool. So they appear to be a very minimalist brand, but I was so excited. And these are the kind of things that I feel like I stumble upon more when I'm closer to the city. So I'm just gonna come in close so you can really get to see this label. If you ever see that, I would grab it and run. So the woman who did the haul, she found two of these sweaters. And so people had swiped up in my Instagram stories and said, oh, I just saw this brand mentioned on so-and-so's YouTube channel. Well, I'd never seen it, but now um, I'm so excited that I found this. So I have it listed for $249, which sounds completely absurd, but that's right on the money as far as like where they're being listed right now. Um, I did receive an offer already, but it was with a bundle and it just I just wasn't ready to let it go for the price that was offered uh, yet. I've had one offer on it and it has 30 likes. It has 30 likes in like three days. I had no idea what this brand was. So I am always learning and I feel like sometimes city shopping is a great education. Okay, you know I have to make an editing appearance every once in a while. I'm just hopping on to say that the sweater actually did sell, which I'm sure you figured out by my thumbnail. It sold, it took a little bit longer than I had thought in my video. I listed it on the evening of the 13th and it sold last night just before bed. I had just um, wrapped up filming and stuff and right before bed, it was around midnight, it sold for, I got an offer for $210, which I accepted. So I had originally priced at $249, sold for $210. I paid about $550 for it. So fun little update. So I don't typically give like a forecast of what I think I'm going to make. I mean, I know that my average selling price is about $35. Um, so if I apply that to 15 of these items, I'm not going to include the Woolrich coat and I'm not going to include the sweater. I am going to include the $800 blazer because I have no idea where I'm going to actually land on that. I have a little bit more confidence with these two items, but the 17 items take away the other two. So 15 items and then the sweatsuit is one piece. So I'm going to say 14 items times 35 is 490 and I'm going to say another 300 for these two pieces and that's conservative. So I'm pretty confident saying that my $92 investment on these 17 pieces will result in about $790 in sales. If you take that 790 and of course this is all hypothetical but you take that 790 and then you subtract 20% in fees although fees vary. We're doing ballpark here. I'm a ballpark kind of girl. Uh, that brings you down to $632, and then we're going to take the $632 and subtract the $92 that I paid. So I'm looking to profit about $540 from this haul. That was fun. I love, love, love finding new brands and sharing them with you. So if you had a good time, please give this video a thumbs up. I am still working on my inventory. I stopped talking about it because it's just taking me so much more time than I anticipated. Uh, and luckily I have some fun videos in between, but don't lose faith in me. It's coming, I promise it's coming, if you're even interested. <laughs> if you're not, then enjoy the hauls. I do have a what sold video coming up. I haven't done just like a traditional one week what sold video where I just go over everything. So I think I'm gonna pick a week in March and I'm gonna do that. I did not do a what sold video, traditional video in January. I did do a what sold reflection video for like Thriftless February and I talked about some of my February sales, but I haven't done a traditional what sold video in a very long time. So I am going to have that up. What sold will be coming soon and more peeks into my inventory will be coming soon as well. All right, folks, if you wanna see more of my content Content. I will recommend some in the next screen. Thank you so much for watching today. I appreciate each and every one of you. I love you guys and I'll see you real soon. Bye everybody.